Welcome to FBLA PBL's webinar designed to provide you tips to start igniting innovation. My name is Lisa Smothers. I serve as the Membership Director for FBLA PBL and I will be speaking throughout this session. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the broadcast using the GoToWebinar toolbar at the top right of your screen. We will go over questions at the end of this presentation. Welcome back to an exciting new membership year and to the first in our series of Webinar Wednesdays. In order to promote FBLA PBL, it's important that you have a snapshot of Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda. We are a nonprofit educational association with a quarter million members preparing for careers in business and business-related fields. There are four divisions. The high school is the largest division with 209,000 members, while the middle school division has more than 18,000 members. PBL, the post-secondary division, has approximately 11,000 members, and the professional division reaches over 3,000 members. FBLA PBL is recognized by several educational associations, as well as the U.S. Department of Education. Today, we are pleased to have a special guest with us. He was a former FBLA national officer, and he currently serves as the PBL national president. Giving greetings on behalf of the FBLA and PBL National Officer teams, please welcome from the state of South Carolina, Donnie Iorio. Thanks, Lisa. It is a great day in South Carolina, and I'm so excited to be able to speak to the membership about our organization. Ever since both the FBLA and PBL National Officer teams traveled to our national center in Reston, Virginia, they've been hard at work facilitating programs to build the membership of FBLA PBL. Both teams are utilizing technology more efficiently than ever before. Technology is allowing us to provide a level of service to our membership that we have never been able to provide. Chapters all over the country are having one-on-one -on -one Google Hangouts with national officers, national staff, and even with each other. It's truly remarkable to see the level of networking happen all on a digital medium. As Lisa will discuss with you shortly, our mission is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Everything that your FBLA PBL national officer teams have planned coincide with our mission statement. As always, please feel free to contact any members of our national officer teams. You can find our contact information on the national website. That's www.fbla-pbl.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Finally, I'd like to remind you that you can ask questions via the question chat box. It's located in the GoToMeeting toolbar on the top right of your screen. We'll be answering those questions at the conclusion of this webinar. And remember, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Thanks again, and back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Donnie. Donnie will be available with me during the question and answer session later in the presentation. He will also be moderating the questions this evening. Let's talk about our mission statement again, which is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. We do this through service projects that help both the school and the community, state and national leadership conferences where students can network with their peers and business leaders from across the country, and co-curricular activities such as the stock market game. Knowing and understanding our mission will help you sell the benefits of FBLA PBL to students, administrators, and the community. Every year we send that chapter a membership poster that advisors can display in their classroom or around campus. It follows the membership theme, which for this year is Igniting Innovation. There is also an online video for each division on the home page of our website. This recruitment tool, at just over two minutes in length, was designed for advisors to play at the beginning of a class. Students should pay dues right away so they can be submitted by October 20th, which is the first membership deadline. With their membership, students receive national publications. Remember, students do not receive membership benefits until dues are paid. The most important resource that any chapter has is its membership. Many local chapters form a recruitment committee that involves both new and returning members. Get the word out about FBLA PBL. Remember, people like visuals. Create a chapter display case and keep it up to date with pictures, articles, and awards. Or sponsor a meet and greet booth. Design chapter t-shirts or polos for all members to wear on the day of chapter meetings. Marketplace can make custom chapter t-shirts for your local chapter. Talk it up. 
Members who are enthusiastic about FBLA PBL will spark an interest in other prospective members. Recruitment is an ongoing process and builds diversity in the group, which makes for rich brainstorming sessions, unique projects, enlightened individual workloads. The members of FBLA PBL are the backbone of the organization. To maintain this membership and continue to expand, the local chapter officers must take responsibility to recruit members. Chapters that are successful in increasing membership numbers have found that the key to growth is planning and implementing a variety of different chapter activities, such as ice cream socials, business tours, and community service projects. Set a goal for your chapter. How many members would you like to gain? It's always good to overshoot on your goals and set high expectations. Next, make a game plan. Create a list of steps you will take in order to recruit your new members. What kind of people are you looking to attract? How will you advertise? What will you say once you have caught the attention of the new members? And don't forget about those who were members of your chapter last year. You should rely on them for help with your recruiting efforts. Active, long-term members are vital to your chapter's success. They are your source of leadership and serve as important role models for new members and can carry on the torch until the next year. Get them involved in the recruitment activities and special projects that are designed to bring in new members. Have them distribute brochures and information packets about your chapter activities to potential members who visit your meetings. Tabling is among the most effective recruitment strategies. Members can take shifts at an informational table in high traffic areas at different sporting events, in the student union or cafeteria, or even at an activities fair. An effective table or booth is colorful, interactive, and informative. Try having candy at the table, showing a membership video, or displaying a chapter scrapbook. Members should also plan to attend local and state activities and events. FBLA September Sweeps is finally here. Benchmark activities include recruiting five paid freshman members, setting and achieving a membership percentage goal increase for paid members, and developing and implementing a recruitment and retention marketing plan. A PIN will be awarded to each local chapter president that meets the criteria and completes an online form. All chapter delegates that complete the September Sweeps program and attend the NFLC will receive a ribbon. The top 10 states with the most chapters achieving September sweeps based on weighted percentage of total chapters within the state will receive national recognition. The form is interactive and online. Don't miss out. Sign up now. You also need to plan to meet on a regular basis. How often will be up to the advisor? With other school organizations and clubs competing for membership, it's important that FBLA PBL make lasting impressions on prospective new members. Publicity is critical in order to communicate to your students what FBLA PBL does, what it stands for, and the opportunities any person can experience as a member. And remember, food does help. Developing an agenda is extremely important to allow everyone to stay on track and focused on our mission. Have your officers discuss the different activities that the local chapter will participate in. Photocopy and hand out a recruitment brochure highlighting events and important dates. If your officers utilize an agenda to stay organized and make the meetings informative and fun, you'll be well on your way to a successful year. FBLA PBL members have grown up with technology, so use it to your advantage. When students sign up to become a member of your chapter, record their cell phone numbers and email addresses. Divide up the list among your local chapter officers so that they can text reminders to all members about meetings, projects, or activities. Have your members go through the various sections of the national website. There's a wealth of information on conferences, scholarships, programs, and activities. In addition, FBLA PBL has a Facebook page, a Twitter account, LinkedIn groups, and a national blog. The blog is updated frequently and contains chapter management and recruitment tips, as well as information on national officer programs. FBLA PBL also offers several incentives to local chapters and members to help build membership. Members recruiting either five or ten new members are rewarded with a certificate of recognition through the Membership Madness and Mania programs. 
Chapters are recognized with certificates of recognition for maintaining or increasing their membership totals from the previous year or signing up all students in one class for FBLA PBL. Please note, though, that you may only receive 100% class participation for one class each year. April 1st is the deadline for these awards. Our curriculum-related programs provide our members with unique opportunities to practice the skills and knowledge that they are learning in the classroom. Let's talk about a popular topic that your chapter can focus on with, one of, with two, actually, of our national programs, financial literacy. New this year is the Virtual Business Finance Challenge, which is based on the Virtual Business Personal Finance 2.0 web-based simulation. FBLA members test their skills in managing their own financial lives and compete against students from across the country. The first place individual or team from the fall round and the spring round will be awarded $500. We also have America Saves. This is a program of the Consumer Federation of America, or CFA, which is centered around America Saves Week from February 25th through March 2nd. It is a national effort aimed at teaching and motivating students to save money through financial action making a commitment that they will spend less than they make and save the difference. CFA also provides training to advisors and students, materials, resources, and many other activities and events. Information on these programs and all of our partners can be found on the Chapter Management Handbook or online under Membership Benefits. Our organization also encourages local chapters to promote our national celebrations. November 15th is recognized each year as American Enterprise Day and is set aside to salute and promote the American Free Enterprise System and to teach others about it. FBLA PBL Week is the second week of February. During this time, chapters are encouraged to publicize their successes, boost their membership, and gear up for their spring activities. Many chapters plan special activities for each day of the week. As FBLA PBL Week coincides each year with National Career and Technical Education Month, this is an excellent time to inform the public about school-to-work activities and programs in general. Chapters should also sponsor high-visibility community service activities that will help generate publicity for your local chapter. Get involved with other organizations in your school and their activities or invite them to join yours. Ask for everyone's opinion on chapter events. Don't forget, people work hard for what they are a part of building. FBLA PBL offers a program described in the recognition section of the Chapter Management Handbook called the Business Achievement Awards for FBLA, or BAA, and the Career and Membership Achievement Awards, CMAP, for PBL. Everything is online and interactive, so there's no paperwork. There's a heavy emphasis on education with integrated classroom projects. Each level builds upon the other, with the top level being recognized at the National Leadership Conference. Preview activities for each level are included online under the BAA or CMAP tabs on the national website at www.fbla-pbl.org. Remember, advisors must register students in the advisory area of the website before students can log on with a login and password. FBLA PBL also provides students with many different travel opportunities. The national level offers a leadership conference in the fall that's designed to jumpstart your FBLA PBL year. This conference is offered in three different locations. Indianapolis, Indiana, November 2nd and 3rd, Denver, Colorado, November 9th and 10th, and Charlotte, North Carolina, November 16th and 17th. To register, go to our website, again, www.fbla-pbl.org, and click on Conference. An NFLC promotional video that can be shown at a local chapter meeting is also located in this area of the website. Finally, the National Leadership Conference, or the NLC, concludes the year and sets the stage for the upcoming school year. The best and the brightest of FBLA and PBL convene to compete in leadership events, share their successes, and learn new ideas about shaping their career future through workshops and exhibits. Next year's NLC, which will be in Anaheim, California, will be here before you know it. So make plans now to make sure that your chapter is in attendance. The dates for PBL will be June 22nd through the 25th, 
and for FBLA, June 27th through the 30th. Okay, we've had a number of questions submitted during the presentation, and we'll be getting to those now. If we run out of time, don't worry. We'll send you a personalized email with an individual answer to that question. The first question is from Tina in Wisconsin, and uh, it's going to be for Lisa. Lisa, Tina wants to know more about September Sweeps and how it will actually help the chapters recruit and retain them. That's a great question, Tina, and September Sweeps is a brand new um, program sponsored by your FBLA National Officer team, and really the beauty of it, it, it's really designed to teach chapters how to develop a plan of action or program of work. So it's all interactive and online, and it starts with required activities like forming a recruitment committee, and then it walks the chapter through different activities, and they choose a total of 10 about how to recruit and retain members. For example, um, one of the activities would be to create posters, and another activity would be maybe to plan an induction ceremony for your new members. And the nice thing about it is that it gives all of the members something to do, the current members. It brings the new members in because it brings them into the different activities, and it's so easy to sign up. It's right on the home page of our national website. And as a matter of fact, today we just managed to post on the blog about how to get started once you get your recruitment committee and how to get started on the first few activities. So watch the blog weekly because we'll give different activities and ideas for this. And the nice thing again about it is that everything is interactive. I know the paperwork sometimes can be a drag, so it's cool that it's on the computer. And the president or student manager, whoever the advisor decides to register for this, once they complete all the activities, they receive a pin and all of the delegates that go to the NFLC that were from chapters that completed this program receive a ribbon for the name badge. So we're excited about it. The officers are really excited about it. And we hope to see a lot of chapter participation in it. Great. Thanks, Lisa. And great question, Tina. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can always submit them via the question chat box in the top right-hand corner of your screen. The next question we have is from Jessica in Georgia. She's heard the term elevator speech, and she wants to know what it is and what mine would be regarding FBLA PBL. All right, so an elevator speech is a speech about an organization or a mission that you can give in the length of time it would take to ride an elevator. So it has to be brief and to the point to get your uh, point across to whoever you're talking to. And believe it or not, often enough, you're actually giving these speeches in elevators, especially while you're attending an FBLA PBL conference. Um, but what I always say is that you're probably talking to a high-end business executive whose office is on the very top floor of a skyscraper. So you have a good 30, 40 seconds before he gets to his floor and steps off and the conversation's ended. So uh, Jessica asked to hear what my speech would be, and I'm going to give you my elevator speech if I'm talking about an organization as a whole, not just FBLA, not just PBL, and not just professional organization. Um, so here it goes. FBLA PBL stands for Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda. It is the largest and oldest business student organization in the world. FBLA PBL brings business and education together in ways that encourage interactivity between members and business people alike. The organization consists of four divisions, middle level for middle schools, FBLA for high schools, Phi Beta Lambda for colleges, and the professional division for business professionals. Members have the opportunity to travel to conferences with attendance approaching 10,000 members. They're able to compete in nearly 60 competitive events and earn cash awards. You can learn more about FBLA PBL by visiting our website, www.fbla-pbl.org. Uh, and that's my elevator speech. So if you guys have a better elevator speech or you'd like to share it, I'd also encourage you to post it on one of our Facebook pages, and that way other members can see what you think about FBLA PBL. The next question is from David in Wyoming. He would like to know where he can find a copy of the FBLA recruitment video that Lisa was talking about earlier. So actually, Lisa, would you mind answering this question for David? No problem. Um, our recruitment video is in a really easy place to find on our website, and again, I'll repeat that once again, www.fbla-pbl.org, and if you go to that home page, right underneath the picture, the second box over is blue, 
And on the top of the box it says join FBLA middle level PBL, but right underneath it you'll see the video. So you can, you can click on it and you'll find the video for each division. And as we said in the presentation, the video is really an excellent resource for chapters because it's really designed to spark the interest of students. It's fast moving. It shows um, clips from conferences, from community service projects. And it really gets kids and students and members, potential members, excited about FBLA and PBL. And Lisa, are these the, the videos that were created uh, with a Facebook theme? Yes. Yes, that's a really good point, Donnie. The theme is really goes along well with our innovation theme because when we actually designed these last year, they were designed to look almost like a Facebook or techie theme because the idea behind it was we wanted something that we could use for a few years um, that we knew was going to be a good product and something that we could put in the hands of our advisors and students. And incidentally, students can ask their advisors because all advisors did receive the DVD last year. Great. And uh, I think one great thing about that theme is that when students see that, especially at the FBLA level, it, it reminds them of being on a social network of some kind, and it really does a good job and does the organization justice and promotion. So great question, David. Thanks for asking it. We have a question from Susan in Florida. Susan wants to know why students should pay dues by October 20th, because our membership is rolling. Um, so you know what? I'll, I'll give it a stab at this. And then, uh, Lisa, if I missed anything, you can go ahead and jump in. But what I would say is the, the number one reason that you want to have that membership in by October 20 is for our publications. Um, our publication, that's the first publication deadline when we're going to send out the publications to our active and paid members. And if you have a student that's registered but not paid or not registered at all, they won't be getting that publication, um, which is really a shame because that is such a big part of our membership. In addition, it limits uh, the student's ability to attend any conferences that might be happening on the fall state level or the national fall if uh, they don't get paid by that, uh, the national fall time. And um, also, a lot of states, when they're looking at the uh, state awards for the Gold Seal, which is the top state chapters, they're looking for people to be paid by the October 20th deadline. So really, it's something to strive to have a majority of your members registered by October 20th, yet still accept registrations throughout the year as our membership is ongoing. And uh, Lisa, if you want to jump in or talk a little bit more about our publications there. Yeah, the publications are really great because you have messages from the national officers, you have competitive event tips, and we know now is the time where a lot of, even though it's early in the year, a lot of the members are starting to decide what they're going to compete in. You really want to be a paid member or even a registered member in order to um, work on the VAARC map. If you're not registered in the system, your name won't show up for your advisor to register you. And finally, um, one last plug for our FVLA September suites, uh, if you have five paid freshman letters, um, members, rather, that's the first requirement for September suites. So you've already completed that first one, so get those members in there. There we go. Um, the next question I have is also for you, Lisa, um, and I think this is a question a lot of people have. Do advisors have to pay dues? And that's one thing that's really great about our organization is we don't charge advisor dues. And one of the main reasons we don't is our advisors are dedicating their time and their efforts, and they're so committed to our organization, that's something that we want to do for our advisors. So no, they are not charged any dues. That's great. That's great. Um, now, there's two questions, or actually, I'm getting a couple questions coming in um, concerning the BAAs and CMAP awards that we talked about earlier. Lisa, if you wouldn't mind um, jumping in with the BAAs, uh, the BAA question, since you're a little bit more familiar with it. But um, I have a student asking, how can they get registered, and when's the soonest they can start working on? Well, that's also a great question. Um, Advisors need to register the student through the advisor area, and it's already open and online to do that, so you can get started right away. And the great thing about the BAA is not only every level builds upon the next, but um, if you don't finish the level during the year, you can actually start it again the next year, so you can continue on where you left off. And we even have you, even though our deadline is March 1st, 
for the first three levels and April 25th for the last three levels. And what it um, what it does is that it lets you work on things during different parts of the year. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a minute there. And so that's the great thing about it because it continues on and you can continue working for the summer. You just can't submit the awards and a lot of people don't know that because you can submit them for the next year on August 1st. So a lot of them do work on it through the summer. Now, really what it is, is the great thing about it, it's aligned to the NBEA standards and the career clusters. So a lot of our advisors actually implement it into some of their business classes, but there's four different levels. The first level, almost everybody's probably already done. They don't even know it. I mean, some of the activities are as simple as going to a chapter meet. So the first two levels, the future and the business level, the PIN's awarded to the local, uh, to the local advisor, and we hope that they award it in a meeting or an, acti or an activity. The third level, the leader level, is awarded at the state leadership conference. So we send that right to the state advisor. And finally, the last level, the America level, is awarded at the national leadership conference. The thing that I like about the program is it gives all the students just another way to earn recognition besides the competitive events. Great, great. And now the next question I have um, is regarding the CMAP awards. And um, it's really, it's Jesse from North Carolina asking, is there any purpose to doing the CMAP awards outside of just gaining PBL experience? And I really think this is a great question because one of the really nice things about the CMAP awards is that by the time you complete it, Jesse, you actually are going to have a digital portfolio of not everything you've done in PBL um, and FBLA for that matter, but also any other business related activities that you have done that you can put into this digital portfolio. That's something that you can give to potential employers, potential internships that you're trying to score. Um, and it really sets you apart from the rest uh, of the applicants. It's something that in today's job market most people don't have and that you would be able to present all from being a part of FBLA PBL and then also being a part of these CMAP awards, which don't um, cost, I think this is something we should talk about too, Lisa. Do uh, BAAs or CMAPs cost anything extra beyond just your membership um, dues? That's actually a great question, and it's one of the best things I think about the BAA or CMAP is number one, that you can't buy the pins anywhere. They have to be earned, so no, they don't cost anything, and you won't see them on anybody except someone who's completed the levels of the program. And they're also different for each level. So actually, even at the middle level, we have something called a MAP, a Membership Achievement Program. And so they earn pins. Then the next level pins are a little bit different, and the activities are different for FBLA. Then in PBL, you have a different pin. And it's like you're building on every level. Now, for FBLA, your end result is a scholarship portfolio that's electronic. And in PBL, it's an interview portfolio. That's great. That's great. All right. I don't see any more questions, uh, and I think we've answered all the ones that we've gotten, so that's great. Um, I'd really like to thank everyone for your participation today. Also, Ms. Smothers, Lisa, thank you very, very much for taking your time to address the membership. Members and advisors, don't miss the next webinar, which is going to be on the National Fall Leadership Conferences. That's scheduled for Wednesday, October 3rd. This presentation, which will be hosted by Richard Bowen, the conference director, will offer a sneak peek at the three upcoming NFLCs, which will be held in Indianapolis, Denver, and Charlotte.